Hello and welcome back to the castle build. Today we're doing interiors. A lot of interiors. We're starting with the throne room because we need a beautiful throne to go with our throne room. And we're using a lot of micro blocks. This is a micro block heavy episode. I'm just going with, again, purple because that's the color of royalty. Gold. A lot of wood because wood seems to work very well. Uh, and then in the, in the top area I'm using a lot of uh, ruby and sapphire to kind of accentuate the various parts of the throne. And then upstairs on the floor, just above the throne room, we're building a gold banister. Um, presumably gold-plated because gold itself is such a soft metal. It would obviously not hold up very well, so presumably we're plating gold somehow. And then I decided on this floor we needed to have a meeting room where the king could meet with his advisors or maybe some other random people. And you remember me mentioning how we needed to kind of block in the stairs going up so the queen could walk down with her skirt. So we're taking care of that as well. Now this area where, where we are right now is kind of is going to be a seating area. An area where people can sit and wait on the king or the queen to call them in or, or meet with advisors. Once you've made it up here, you've sort of made it so to speak, but we still have a seating area and a waiting area for them to hang out in. Now we're in the meeting room. We've got the bookcases, and now we're having building in a nice big table where advisors can hang out and meet. And I decided it was the marble was just too monolithic, so I inserted some sapphire. And this is the king's chair. Nobody would sit in there except for the king. Again, because of the purple on on the chair. Everyone else has to sit in the yellow chairs. So if you're meeting with somebody, it's not the king, you might still end up in here, but you wouldn't sit, nobody would sit in that chair. Now we've gone one floor up from the meeting room. And we're just blocking in the area so that the queen can, can walk up and down the stairs without fear. And this is going to be the royal library. So here I, I just filled in as much as I could with bookcases. Lighting was a challenge in here. Lighting was a challenge because of the the amount of bookcasing. You see me using panel covers to place in those the bookcases there. I do go back and fix that. And there I, you saw me cutting bookcases a little bit so that I could use paneling on the back side so that when you come down the stairs it's just paneling and you don't see the books. And it's a lot of books, obviously. If you're king or queen, you would you would have a lot of books. Now we're into the dining room, and we're laying out the big dining room table for the, the king and his family. Now, I don't do all of these floors on screen. Uh, I do finish most of these off screen. And the reason being, you see that there's not a lot of view range with the camera. And especially places like the Royal Library, it's just so hard to get a camera in there. So we just have to make do. Be able to see the full effect when you when the map is released. So now in the back I'm building up a basic kitchen for the staff to to be in. Then building a, a kind of a sitting area so you can kind of sit and hang out as you're waiting for food. Or maybe you're just coming down for a snack. Because king and queen, you, you would have staff at all times. I've gone up one more floor. And this is where the prince and princess are going to be. Each get their own room. It was decided that the princess liked green. So everything is going to be green. And here I'm building a canopy bed. And it can be very difficult to build a canopy bed. So by using a block, a full block of wood, I can place the micro blocks in the full block and then just remove the full block and I'm left with the basics. You see me toying here with different heights of bed. I decided that was the best. And I was just putting in an area so that you block the, the cold air from coming in and disturbing the, the, the sleepers. This was pretty normal in, in medieval beds because there wasn't a lot of heating. You 
see I'm, I edged things in uh, emerald because, well, the princess loves her green. A little seating area and eating area over there. and She's got a little desk there to work on on her studies or, or whatever she feels like she needs to do. Now a princess in this time would not have been allowed a lot of leeway and she would have had a woman that would have taken care of her at all times and, and kept those terrible boys away so that the princess could maintain her, her chastity until she was married. And here I'm building a bed for the woman that would take care of the princess, make sure that she is always chaste. You can see a very green room that we're going with here. Now we're in the prince's room, and the prince likes blue. He also gets a bigger bed because he's going to be the king. And because males in the medieval times were less didn't have to be chased. Uh, the room, the bed is big enough to allow him to have a female visitor hang out with him. It's an unfortunate truth. And over here we, we're building a study area so that he can study and a little seating area and dining area so he can hang out with his friends, maybe play Dungeons and Dragons, something like that. And then a couch. I, I like the couches, they're fun. And then on the wall I hung a couple of swords. I do have to go back and decorate the rest of this castle with wall art, or I'll, I'll ask Doss to do it, something like that. Uh, you can see that it was, a, it was a very blue room. Now we're one floor up higher, and now we're working on the king and queen. The king and queen are going to have a very large bed because, well, they're king and queen, so therefore they deserve a large bed. And I decided instead of using wood, which I had used elsewhere, I was going to use gold because, well, when you think of king and queen, you sort of think of the richness of gold. So we're using gold and then, of course, purple because, well, that's the color of royalty. And there's going to be a lot of purple, and again, we're having a seating area. We're using the purple and yellow, and then we're edging it in red. putting in some end tables. And then I've tried different ways to try to make a coffee table. And in the end, I, I end up just deciding I, I need to just make a full height table and call it a coffee table. And here we are finishing up the bed. So the king and queen have a very large bed. And now we're just laying in, again, the, the curtains around their curtain bed. Now, over there I'm building a Chamberlain's bed. So the Chamberlain would not necessarily always live in the same area as the King and Queen. In this case, the Chamberlain does. And now we're building kind of the, the dressing area for the King and Queen, where they might dress, get dressed, put on makeup, work, whatever might be necessary for them. And then laying in some more of my couch furniture. Now we're up another level. You see I actually left the sign. I had gone up and, and put a sign in every single floor so I knew what I was building. Here we're working on the Wizard and King's meeting chamber. Start by blocking in the area so that the stairs are, are solid. Now we're making a, a very large table where the wizard and the king and perhaps some advisors might all meet to discuss what the wizard has discovered. Perhaps even make battle plans if necessary. Now I decided that the wizard's lair was going to be blocked off. Either the wizard is trapped and, and a prisoner, or perhaps the wizard's lair is so dangerous they, they want to make sure that nobody gets up there. Now with the wizard's area, I decided to use a lot of lapis block, as you see in the, the table there, and cyan wool, because I really like that look. You 
see the, the two gates, gated areas to keep people from being able to just go up into the wizard's lair. And a bunch of beds here because the guards are just going to be there. I'm using the reinforced doors. And it took me a while to figure out how exactly I wanted to get wiring. And then I just blocked it up with the paneling. And the paneling is perfect for that. It allows you to hide your redstone wiring. And then it was just repeating the same thing on the other side. And then we just started building in some of the areas with uh, some more cyan colored blocks. I do go back and I put in a seating area for the guards as well, because they do need it. Now we're up into the wizard's chambers. First I needed to build stairs up to the final level, so that's what we started with first. And then I needed to, to block in those stairs, just like I've done elsewhere. And that took a good bit of time. It is kind of difficult in some cases to, to get those micro blocks to cooperate. And I do still have to go back and do a few finishing touches here and there. There's a desk over there made out of lapis. Where the wizard might study. And I'm just dashing around and, and decided I needed to just finish in the ceiling because I was having problems scoping where I was going to put things because I didn't have a, steel, a ceiling. So now I decided to build the wizard's bed. In the wizard's bed I used nether brick and sandy brick to create the bed along with the, the cyan colored wool. And I used it because it was different, really. That was the only real reason I used it. I'm building a little meeting place, a little chair, dining area maybe, so that the wizard can still hang out with friends or well, probably doesn't have very many friends up here. And then I built a little workbench for the wizard. And put out a bunch of brewing stands, and I used obsidian uh, chests because they looked really interesting. And then over here, I used a bunch of different blocks out of the Thaumcraft set because when they were set out, they looked very wizardry. I didn't know what a lot of the blocks were, so I just kind of placed them and then and then kind of dealt with what were they later. Now we're up in his actual work chamber. Start, I started with the Thaumcraft obelisk, and then I started working on various structures. I'm not really sure, again, what everything was. I just kind of wanted to make a some sort of very wizardry looking area. Lots of, of stuff everywhere just kind of make you think. And, here I put a couple of brains in jars around, surrounded by warded glass. Uh, and really I was just pulling everything I could out of the Thaumcraft set. This, these are warded stone. And then I used a lot of tallow candles as well. And some bookshelves for him to write down his studies. hungry chests. Now, oh, I just noticed I have a creeper on my roof over there, but uh, now we're out in the garden. And I decided to create a nice little garden area, a walkway, and I used maize stone to create the walkway. And then gravel to connect it in to other areas. And here I'm placing around a bunch of trees and flowers, and then I bone mealed them only to discover how big some of the trees really were see the nice maze stone walkway. Now I'm working on some benches so that the, the people can hang out in the nice calming garden underneath a birch tree. I'm just running around bone mealing just to get an effect. And I also was knocking out all of the torches and realized it got kind of dark. So I created these uh, birch wood and zychronium block lamps and I think they work really well. They they light up the area and they look really interesting. 
Now we're over at the entryway and I'm putting down metal on our drawbridge. This bridge won't actually work, at least not right now, maybe in the future. It'll never fully work because it's never going to be computerized. Um, it'll be pull levers if it ever works. But this is a peaceful kingdom. And we're just laying in all the lights so it'll be lit up nicely at, at night. I'm just kind of dashing around doing some finishing touches. I've been slowly deepening the moat, and this is me. I'm, I'm down there working on deepening the moat because I wanted the moat to be two blocks deep because I thought it looked nicer. You see a balsa wood tree kind of sticking up above on the right there. Balsa wood is a very tall tree I've discovered. Very interesting tree as well, though. Now this is a look from on top of the entryway, and I'm laying out the beginning of the street. And here I'm going to use a landmark and a red uh, redstone torch to build a spire. You see the spire off in the distance. That's about 64 blocks away from where I was. And I'm thinking that might be where the, the square starts for what's going to be our church. gives you an idea of how I'm building the stair the streets and the streets are stairs and half blocks and I learned this from Shin at, in the Yogg's cast during his Let's Build series and I really liked the effect so we're, we're repeating that effect here it looks like a successful uh, very nice street effect so we're just going to use it and borrow it from him the toughest part is going up and down here we are going in, and we're, we're actually walking, so you're going to have to mind the bumping here, but we're, we're walking into our new castle, going around the outside, through our new garden, looking up at our giant tower. You can really start to see that this is a very large structure. We still have a lot of work to do inside. Nice throne room. And our waiting area where people can hang out and wait the king's or his advisors calling them in to meet in the big meeting room. And we head up into the big royal library. It is now a maze to get through here. I have tables and chairs set up here and there, but it is a, constructed as a giant maze. Heading up to where you can meet and eat, and there's a bar there, big old table for them to, to eat dinner at. And then the kitchen, water that's brought up every day, and then cauldrons and furnaces and storage. And heading up to the princess, princess's room, her, her woman keeping the, the guys away so she can protect her chastity. And into the prince's room, Lots of blue in his giant bed because he will be king someday. Now into the king and queen, there's a chamberlain's. See, I, I've got these uh, interesting looking areas to store clothes or other things. Their giant bed and another seating area. Very open. And up we go. Here into the meeting area with the wizard. The interesting table, and some brewing stands, where the guards hang out when they're guarding the entrance into the wizard's lair. And up we go into the wizard's room, where he can work all the Thaumcraft devices all over the place. A brain, because you need an extra brain. Now we're heading up into his workroom where we have all kinds of brains and jars and weird devices here and there and everywhere. I don't even know what they all do, but they look cool. And uh, an ear, some sort of ear thing. And here's our castle. It's, it's come a long ways. It's become very big. We still have decorations to do, but for now, this is where we are.